Hey viewers of watching this channel, this is Spanish Rob here. Uh, we're in Amsterdam and I'm here with uh, Michael Holterich of Holterich Watches. <laughs> and that a good friend, uh, James, set up and uh, we'll be with some watch collectors here in Amsterdam while on vacation. And uh, he brought a collection of his watches and some new prototypes so we could look at. So we're going to take a look and we're going to ask a bunch of questions. I'm here with uh, one of my best friends, Mike Morota, Gashus Clay over here. And uh, let me flip this camera over so you can see. Michael, if I knew how to flip this over, how do you flip this camera over? I didn't do my beer. <laughs> yeah, I love the, just, the background of Amsterdam is amazing. So here we are with Michael, oh. um, and uh, he's going to show us his watches. Feel free to, to start your spiel and tell us about. Thanks for for meeting with us. Well, oh, thank you too. Uh, uh, it was quite spontaneous, actually. So uh, I love learned, it. Uh, I learned that you were in uh, the Netherlands like yesterday evening, I guess. <laughs> so uh, it's quite spontaneous. So I put this very fast in my in my purse and, uh, to the river. Well, thanks for my, making the trip. Yeah, well, no, well, no problem. Um, well, my 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 background is actually I'm I'm educated as an architect, so my focus is uh, is is very much on the overall design. Also, the techniques should be interesting, but uh, but it should be like an integral, uh, in integral. Is it, uh, is it it's English? Right? Yeah. yeah, like a total concept. So um, when I started with the idea, it was 2030, and in my uh, university, 3D printing was a super hot item. So and I was thinking, I want to make something which is in very small quantities because in the first place, I'm going to make it for myself, um, and I want to experiment with interesting shapes. So. I should use 3D printing in that sense. So I learned that metal printing was an option, but it was actually, it was done by uh, Fortic Watches. Uh, they were just like in the same period experimenting, um, but they make like cases which are suited for, uh, so they, 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 they paved the way how to work with 3D printing. So they make cases for pocket watch uh, movements. Um, and I, I thought, well, I want to make something very small and I want to learn how the process of, of printing works. So like it's building up material so you can actually work in layers, so you work in sections, so you can do different shapes. So that should be the strength. So it's more the design kind of thing. And the design and that, is amazing. Well, it means that the... Um, well, I'm, I'm very classic in my style, I guess, but so, so the overall idea is to be classic, also because the watch industry is quite classic. We just spoke about that it's so it have traditions of 200 years old and people have a certain uh, idea about how a watch looks, so it shouldn't be too freakish, um, but it should be interesting and a little bit different. So this watch is the uh, like the most Art Deco uh, uh, watch I made, I guess, uh, and it's all about proportions, so you have the, the, the lux with open details inside so it shows the the process of the making i love that uh, also the hands are open worked um, and uh, uh, everything on the outside is 3d printed in stainless steel it took, took two and a half two and a half years to develop actually um, it was in this sense it was never done before and the, the challenge is that the product should be the same and the strength of the material should be like the same as when you use normal steel um, oh yeah, twist. Yeah, so the uh, uh, the hands are open work, the case is open work, and uh, the movement is a Peso movement, 7001. And I choose that one because I was collecting vintage uh, chronographs, and they have an average size of 38 millimeters. And I thought that was very stylish because it suits underneath your uh, your your shirt. Um, so it's introvert, so I thought 38 millimeters is the best size for me to work with. But I want to add a lot of details, so I should use a very small movement. And, and, uh, uh, and I love like sub-second hands. They are like, sub-second sub hands are actually, they are the most honest about the construction of the, of the movement. Because it's just like a, a, a longer pivot of, of one of the gears. Uh, so it tells about the construction which is interesting, so it should have a, a, a small second. And everything is uh, uh, like, it's exactly in the middle of the, uh, of, uh, of the center axle and also the, uh, the indices. 
so the chapter ring so that was the most important thing of this when i go further then you have to delve blue because i'm from delft and delft has a delft pottery which is quite famous so it's always white and blue we've seen uh, that a lot here in holland uh, yeah it's, it's like a very super popular it's uh like a, a lot of the the uh tourist attraction like yeah. the uh, souvenirs everything is delft blue and the yeah. funny thing behind it is actually it's <laughs> during the like 400 years ago we had well this uh, trade it's actually uh, uh like uh, who the Emma the colonializing? Oh yeah. yeah. So it's not not a very great uh, history, but <laughs> well, we That's were a, a lot in problem. Asia. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And uh, and actually, they the uh, uh, like Dutch uh, tr traders they saw uh, Chinese porcelain, and they were amazed about it. So they 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 they, they took it and they sold it for a lot in the Netherlands, and then. Over here, there were companies who were thinking, well, we can make that, but we can't because it's way thicker than porcelain, so it's it's, it's pottery actually. But uh, but that came quite popular, and right now in China, they are copying Delft Blue again. So it's like, ah, <laughs> it's like that's, yeah, that's funny. But that's and that's, that's uh, what, like that is right. Yeah, this is uh, uh, this is like uh, I, I had this American client, and he asked me, "Well, I like the color combination, I like the story behind it, but I want something which is less technical." which is more like a, like a piece of art. Um, and he was actually buying two watches for his son. So one was from um, uh, Case Engelbart's and one was from me. So I was like, oh, damn, I have to do something great. <laughs> I was quite nervous. <laughs> yeah, it's quite some. What so uh, brand? Uh, Case Engelbart. So he's the engraver from, um, from Switzerland. Oh, wow. Now, he's a Dutch guy also, but I learned yes. afterwards. <laughs> but, um, and he said, well, I, no, no matter, how much time you take or what it will cost was not really an issue so I said take your time and I was uh, um, I was uh, ex uh, like exhibiting with a Dutch pottery artist back in those times it was 2017 something and uh, and she she mingled the, um, the colors uh, before they baked the, the, uh, she baked the, the pottery so it was a very natural kind of shape uh, which appeared and that I, I really liked. So I started with, uh, I wanted to make something which is very spontaneous, uh, which you can't control with the mind in that sense, because then it's more fascinating to look at. And then it keeps being fascinating. So it's the, very fluid. It, it, it's kind of like a representation of like what a dream would be like. Yeah, exactly. It should be a li little bit, um, yeah, a little bit fake also in a sense. Yeah. I don't know if it's that, if that's too negative. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be like, what is it or how is it made? And you can have questions, but it's also like a modern painting in that sense. So I work with with uh, resins. They they with with uh, with pigments inside and they're pouring. But then you have a very thick layer which has to be flattened. So uh, uh, and then thanks a lot. Merci. Afterwards, you have the uh, so. You can control where the blue is, for example, or where the white is. You can control it to a certain extent, but it, it's it's fluid, so it, it, it pours inside. And then when you flatten it, you have the eventual uh, 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 pattern coming. And that's that's quite well. That determines if it's beautiful or not. But it has to be a little bit in balance. So like nine out of ten, I, I redo because it's not well. I don't like it. But so it should have like a nice balance in blue and white, but also a very spontaneous. Thing which I couldn't okay. be reproducing with my an, brain. An abstract sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Wow. I did, a, I did an enamel course also for it because I thought, well, enamel should be the way to go. It's very classical uh, to, to do that in watchmaking. But then you're working with powders. So you have to, um, uh, uh, to, to make a spontaneous pattern, you're still uh, putting the powders uh, by hand on a certain position. And that means that you control it by the, by the brain. Uh, and, and well, you never get a real spontaneous eff effect. So that, that's the idea behind this. Uh, and of course, it's Delft blue setting. Uh, it, well, it's a little bit by my town, so it can oh, be in, it. in all colors. But the nice thing when you uh, when you work with fluid materials is that you get also a difference in in colors, like in, in tunes of the blue. So that can be fascinating. Also. Did you take it out? Yeah, of course. Take a ah. take a closer look. So th this is uh, the idea behind it is the same as the the Delft blue. Every dial is different, um, so I make a couple of dials, and the, the client can choose which one he likes most. Um, and uh, and also the uh, the the back of the watch is is engraved, so it's it's not. We have 
We have one, uh, it's actually, they are a couple, uh, so like a man and wife, uh, and the, uh, she is designing and he is actually engraving. They are the only ones to do, uh, who are capable to do this on this scale in the Netherlands. So, and, and it's really nice to work with them because it, you can see them grow in their skills and also they, they see my work grow, so it's, it's very nice uh, collaboration. And each each one is different, so this is a, a, a unique watch for every client in that sense. And I think if you uh, we spoke about independence, independence can be bold, but also that's be because of the internet you have um, the opportunity to for for a client to directly get in contact with the maker. So uh, you can exchange ideas. Uh, and and the product is always it's it's never a series product it's always a little bit tweaked to the wishes of the client and I think that's very interesting when we're, we're being an independent you can offer that bespoke um, watch sort of yeah of course in the end you're still the designer so it has to be within the design so in the beginning somebody has to like the overall design first and then then you go talking about all the options. Um, so that, that's the Delft Blue. Um, this is the, the raw ornament. Um, and um, the idea behind it is, you can see that the, the, the shape of the case is somehow, it's, it's, it's the same base idea, um, but the finishing is different. So it has like these edges along the lugs, and that's to pronounce that uh, uh, you can make the differences with, uh, uh, with finishing. Uh, because printing is, is, is a really rough procedure, um, it's, it's not very precise and you always have a, a, a surface coarseness, like a coarseness of the, the texture. And, and I think... Go ahead. I was going to say, is this, this sandblasted rough finish, is that the way it's printed or do you have to do that finish after it's printed and then still somehow do the, po the high polish? Very smart. Um, it's, sandblasting is part of the process always because you, uh, uh, when it comes out of the printer you have, a, uh, you have this very, well, very coarse surface and also some, some loose parts on it. So part of the procedure always is to cutting away excess material and then sandblasting. And of course it, it differs, the, the different type of, of material for the blasting you use gives a different texture. So I use a very uh, sharp texture which gives uh, 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 the, the glittering effect. Um, but it tells how the watch is made. And I think, I think that's like the industrial part of that is very interesting uh, for a design reason. So, so I hope later on in later designs so that, that will also be the topic. Uh, so always the same be. process for the dial? Yeah, yeah, so the dial is, I see that there are some stains on the glass, but um, the dial is, is uh, well, the base material is, it's, it's actually brass plate of metal. And then I use the same uh, uh, material to blast it, so you get the same coarseness, so it looks like it's made out of one piece. Although this is steel and this is rhodium, so you get a little bit change. Uh, uh, but rhodium is a little bit brighter, so it shines more. So I think that's a nice detail for the, for, for the, for the dial. Um, it's a way more modern, more uh, industrial watch, but it's still very uh, a, a dress watch, so it's a little bit in between, I guess. Oh, I love it. And the idea to, to put loom on the hands is also to, to, to show that it's more modern, modernistic. So from my background, it should be, this is like, um, you had this architect in the, uh, in the beginning of the, uh, the 20th century, it's called Le Gorbichet, and he invented the idea of using raw concrete as an aesthetic part in buildings. And he called it Beton Brut. So maybe this is like Horlogerie Brut, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I, hope, uh, I hope something that it, it, it will set a new aesthetic in, in, in my designs. Um, the movement is uh, still the Passoian base, but uh, it has two new plates, uh, which are uh, uh, sewn by hand. I use the same finishing again. So everything looks like the same, uh, uh, like it's made out of the same uh, material. And the edges are, uh, uh, they have anglage to have the, the contrast just like the case. Wow. And with this finishing, I, I found out that, that like finishing of watch movements, I find that very interesting. So um, I noticed that, that uh, uh, yeah, I can, I can turn it around also a little bit. That, um, using a very new production method, 
combined with like very traditional way of finishing things, it's actually quite fascinating because you, you, uh, when I well, when I started to read about the opinion of watchmakers about 3D printing, is is like uh, two two things. One is that they don't believe that you can can get something useful out of it because it's too rough compared to traditional uh, if, you, if you make exactly the same thing on a traditional machine and a 3d printing machine then it's it's uh, you can't compare it so you can't use the printing part so you have to think differently but if you use it as an as a design feature as an extension of what is possible within the uh, within your designs or within your finishing then it's very interesting then it's actually add it adds to all the opportunities and I think then there's a big way to to examine still the upcoming years, right? So it, it can actually be implemented in the tradition of, of watchmaking. And uh, wow. that's what I hope to achieve eventually. So uh, That's amazing. How long have you been around? How long have you been doing this? Uh, How long has this brand been around? Uh, three years. Wow. So almost three years, actually, I have to say. So I started at the end of, uh, like, I think it was a... 22nd of, of, of November in 2016 and I uh, started the brand. I just finished my college um, wow. and, and, and then during my graduation uh, uh, project I, uh, I had the first client. He actually found me through Facebook and then I noticed that while making the watch for that client and also the um, uh, and being still in the middle of prototyping uh, for the cases and, uh, and doing my graduation and I noticed that making the watch was way more interesting. So I had to go into this uh, this thing. So um, I, I, it was actually also, it was the, exactly the good moment, the, the best moment for me because I, I didn't have a mortgage. I didn't have, we didn't have children, right? <laughs> we don't have children. So we don't have the responsibility. So we can, you can take the risk in this age. 100%, now. this is the right time to do it. Yeah, to exactly. take the risks. Yeah. So I, I, I had this student's uh, uh, studio but you have, there's, uh, I had this kind of contract that when you finish your, your college and you have to move out. But prices are rising and like a start salary for an architect, is, it's, it's, it's super low. Um, so I was thinking what I'm going to do, I want to do full-time watchmaking. Um, but I also want people to show how I make my watches. I don't own the printer by the way because it's a million euros. So, uh, but I work, I work with a Belgian firm to print. But, but all the finishing and designing I do myself and um, uh, so I, I thought well if I have to move out an atelier with a physical store and window pane like is more important than a studio or a house so I rented the I, I found this renter who uh, uh, was willing to rent me the, the, uh, the shop and I could sleep with a little mattress in the back of the shop. So wow. the first half of the year. Was <laughs> <laughs> Putting it back. Yeah. Right yeah, well. That's dedication. Sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. well, if you, if you want to do, well, probably it's for you the same in your profession. If you, if you want to uh, to really do this, you have to do what you like. And then and then it will grow eventually. I, I, I believe so. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it will probably also, if I look at the Grunefeld brothers and, and what they told me about their, how they started, etc. Probably it will take another 10 or 15 years before it's really settled, but... Um, that yeah, makes well, sense. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. even uh, Max Booster, MBNF. Yeah. Um, I remember when they first came out, it wasn't until they came full circle yeah. with making a round watch that people really they became a little more mainstream and people really started taking it more seriously well, yeah, it took a decade yeah. really almost and then when they finally got to that you know it's funny because they started the opposite people yeah. start with a simple like you know more well-rounded like more general for everyone kind of yeah. watch and then work their way into like the obscure crazy you know whatever they want to do and yeah. he, he was so brilliant to start the other way around make these pieces these horological machines yeah. that are really out there and he took a gamble and I ever talked to him about it, how he would say you know there was day there was there was years that we almost had to close our doors we were two weeks yeah. away from closing our doors because we produced well, four we're movements also. Yeah, yeah we produced four movements in two years and there was a there was, it was touch and go at a time he's like I didn't know if we were going to be able to keep going and then the LM came out people told him yeah. not to make it because it was exactly it was exactly the opposite of everything he was doing <laughs> he does it and it was a huge success and, yeah. and I explained to him when I, I my opinion was like that's because full circle you came back around and now you appealed to the masses yeah. and that helps cement the brand uh, really for everyone also, and in indies what he did is also uh, he also made a connection with art by opening the mad gallery oh 100 percent. that's I, I like that so Brilliant much move. That, this is like 
every watch above twenty dollars is probably too much, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's it's art and emotion what you are buying. So the the link with also with the art world is like so close actually when you, when you think about it. And and he actually makes like one of the few who actually makes that connection, which I find very fascinating. And you've done that here as well. With, yeah, uh, well, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> it's very it's beautiful. No, it's amazing. Shout out to the Gronerfeld brothers. Definitely yeah. one of my favorite independent brands. Yeah. The Rimantois IT41 is like my favorite watch, yeah. I think maybe ever. Just the design quality of what they've done and the yeah. size is perfect. Everything about it. It's Finishing funny because, also. oh, the finishing yeah. is amazing. I yeah. love what they, they, all the steel bridges in, it, to do that all in steel is just um, fantastic. Yeah. And I'm very, very, very impressed with the architecture and design of this watch for an indie brand. I'm just so blown away. This one right here is my absolute favorite. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, I love the sandblasting. I love the color. I'm very intrigued by the hollow lugs and it's yet like a modern futuristic um, I, what interpretation just, of a classic watch. Yeah, that's the idea. Which is just brilliant. It's so original. Ab about the conservativeness of some some uh, like perceptions in this industry is that I, I published it for the first time, uh, I don't know, it was somewhere on Facebook or something. And there was a, or, or maybe it was a monochrome uh, uh, article. Then somebody responded and he said, um, yeah, well, using this coarse surface on a dress watch, is that possible? Like, should you do it? It's okay. And you're talking about a watch, why not? <laughs> yeah, the sky's the limit. You know, push the boundaries, let's see. Yeah. You know, a lot of people were just like, that would never work, that's not a thing. And then people do it. Yeah. And there's so many great examples of that in history. And it's still round, right? It's yeah. still round and it has a leather strap. And so. what uh, Romain Gautier did was <laughs> yeah. brilliant on their logical one, and then they did yeah. the sand blasted. It just blew a lot of us collectors and people just away the for them to do that. The finishing's amazing, it works so well. Yeah. And I, I think you did like really well. Finishing with the suede strap, just to give the whole like yeah, this, materials, this, I love everything about this one. This is like they match, like uh, 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 also outside of the the di indirect sunlight, the, the the dial is more modest. So uh, um, I use a, a aluminum oxide. I guess it's called like that to, to glass. We have a very sharp. Uh, it's way more interesting in texture compared to normal sand blasting or, or glass blasting, and that that makes a little bit of difference. Um, I want to show you one more thing. Oh, actually, actually oh, great. this is the um, rose gold printing. Three this printing. is uh, yeah. It's, it's uh, um, so I sorry for the used strap. Oh, no um, this is a uh, solid rose gold, um, and uh, it was actually one year after I uh, well I started the brand. I went to Basel and I knew that there was a company called Goodson Gold. It's an English firm, very old firm, and they produce uh, precious metals for the jewelry industry. Um, I think I, I, I think I should do this, <laughs> but um, um, and they, together with a German firm who actually uh, makes uh, printing machines, they developed a, 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 a machine suitable for precious metals. Because you have you have different uh, parameters for the for, for the it temperature and yeah, it's all, softer. Yeah, it's softer. Each each metal you use has a different parameters and that makes it for each uh, design you, uh, you work with and each material you work with you have to test a lot um, so it can take years um, so in 2017 uh, in, in Basel I, I went to them and I said well you are testing making watch cases with, uh, with conventional watch cases with 3D printing you have to do a shitload of finishing because it looks Shitty, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, and and in the end you have the same appearance, but the, the price is way too high for a normal production, uh, and you can't see that it's printed, which is part of the aesthetics. It can be part of the aesthetics. So I said I have a design which is suitable for this product, but but I don't have the money to to make this. So are you willing to, to collaborate? And they accepted that. So uh, uh, actually a year later I I, uh, I had the final uh, the first final uh, product. Um, before there was there was experimented with with printing of of case, but but never successful successful commercially. So I think this is the, the uh, well a novelty in that sense. It has the same uh, 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 well this one is worn, so maybe you should so you have the uh, I have to excuse me for the no, no uh, but you you still have the open lugs, but the lugs are a little bit thicker because the material is way softer. Ah, that um, makes sense. The, the case is made out of one piece, so uh, also the movement spacer is is uh, uh, is also 
printed in gold so it's it's quite a lot of gold in that sense um, and um, uh, and what's the blue in the inside? The blue is like a lacquer. So I put it to, 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 to show which kind of model uh, it is actually. Um, that, uh, so, so also with this one I do the blue and for these I have the black infill. So it, it different shades the, the, the model. How you distinguish them, that makes sense. Yeah. So question that most people are going to ask, what's the price point? What's the range from uh, where to where? Yeah, what's the range? Well, uh, that's in the end, that's the most the most difficult thing to uh, thing to determine, actually, what kind of price you can you can charge for a watch. It's it's a it's a it's a product of of emotion. And, it's passion. Uh, it's, it's a lot. Passion, it's, it's a lot of work, and and, yeah. and, and, and it's a risk. It's, yeah. uh, it is, it's and also you are not a famous brand, so but still, uh, uh, um, the the price I started uh, including the VAT is uh, four thousand one hundred euros. So it's it's actually VAT. It's, 3,380 euros and then until what you, whatever you want like uh, type of finishing of the movement can be uh, can be high-end and also the um, uh, I just made a platinum version for example and that one is including that twenty six thousand dollars wow. of euros but, but then you have uh, like more than 160 hours of work also and, uh, the amount of material is quite a lot so it's justified. Yeah. It's justified. It seems like it's very justified. I hope it seems so. Like it's very, pr it's very fair because of the amount of work that goes into it. Yeah. They're very, very unique pieces. So I, I mean, a twenty-six thousand dollar platinum watch is, I don't say a bargain, but for the amount of quality of work, well, craftsmanship that's going in there is sort of like a. It's kind of like a bargain because you can get a lesser watch, a, a bigger brand yeah. with less work well, that's, to that's it. That's one thing you have to, as an independent, you always have to remember yourself. Also, is that. You are a small brand, so the people who are buying this also have to have uh, like the they have to they trust in, in in the work I do, and they are convinced that I will expand. So that's 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 really special. Also, that somebody has that amount of trust. If the people have to trust and the belief, yeah. and they have the the balls with their money where their yeah. <laughs> where the mouth is. It's yeah. such a huge investment in such in in, in, in a good way, not yeah. an investment in the typical way. I think it's an amazing thing, and that's why I, I've, I'm so much of a supporter of independent watches because you're getting a lot for your money in almost yeah. every regard when it comes to independent watches. You're getting more so because you don't have that giant budget of marketing, yeah. and then it's also the fact that you're getting something unique, yeah. uh, and it's there's very few of them out there, and for me that's very important. Because, um, you know, there's a bajillion Rolexes and, and paddocks out there in the world. Where, yeah. Regardless of whether we see them or not, it doesn't mean that there isn't, because there's a lot. And, and I think I think you can, you, uh, as in, well, most independents, they can, uh, they can show the process of the making of the watch, especially for the client. So the client, the, the, the watch is unique, but also the process is unique. That's not, you, you, you don't have it when you buy a Rolex, for example. It's still a beautiful watch, but you don't have the process behind it. Uh, and I think that's kind of the interesting part also. And that's also why, for, for me, it would be interesting to develop into two lines. You have, you have like base models um, uh, with three or four base lines. And you have, you have a bespoke line, which is more experimental also. And that's one thing I would, I would like to show you. Yes, I'd love to see what's... Uh... Uh, it's, a, it's a skunk sketch. Uh, Ooh. And uh, uh, the idea is, it's going to be a skeleton, by the way. Wow. Um, is this like the first time... Well, this is the first time I'm showing it. So, uh, oh wow! Uh, I, I showed some sketches on the on the internet, but very fake sketches. <laughs> um, yeah. So, is this like a world exclusive? Still, well, yes, but not totally because I <laughs> haven't designed everything yet. It's still wow, um, in progress. Work in progress. It's a work in progress. Yes. Oh, look at the lines. Oh, it's uh, so great that your your uh, architecture because that's where you're going to really appreciate. This is going to be my Art Nouveau watch. Oh wow! <laughs> Look at these lines and these curves. This is sexy as hell. This is very much like those twisted, like the paddock, the yeah. kind of like a curve, the old vintage pieces with the curved. They had, but like they look like scrolls almost, yeah. and the lugs. But the difference is that. But this, they're different uh, though. They're like can, this, it's unlike anything I've seen. Yeah, you can you can look through every part. So uh, this is hollow. Oh, wow. uh, even there behind this, there's a hollow section. So you can see there a hollow section. So everything is almost detached from the case. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, and also the the lugs are going to be they are going to have the same uh, finish oh, sorry the same finish as this one Ooh. so you have the you have for example this piece is going to be rough and then this is a, a 
uh, 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 hand polished detail. So you have a, con a lot of contrast, which is also going to ex uh, emphasize the, the shaping of the watch. And from the back, it's it's like almost they are muscles holding the strap. Um, and and the, the idea is that eventually, uh, that's where art also comes in, that the watch itself should be like a sculpture. Um, because then it's fascinating to look at from all angles. And uh, uh, it's not something you will sell directly. It's, it's more, uh, it's, it's, it has to be a special piece, but that's, that's the case. Um, and, and I'm working with the Peso right now and I'm, I'm, I'm modifying the Peso, but the dream is also to put 3D printing inside of the movement also, because then you have a total concept. Um, but the thing is that with printing you can't get the precision. But there's recently there's a new technology uh, which is more precise than the, uh, what they call selective laser melting, which are used right now. You have a new technology, uh, binder jetting, and it's more precise. And hopefully I have these ideas how to make it work inside of a movement. Not the, not the kinetic parts, but the static parts, like the, the bridges. Um, but it means that you can make them, uh, them just as sculptural as the case itself. Um, and that's that's when then everything is complete, right? Uh, <laughs> and, and then also that, that should be, because also that process is not like in a thousandth of a millimeter precise. So you have to post process a lot. Uh, so there is going to be precision milling and also hand finishing, because still I like the anglage, etc. It should be in there also. Um, uh, but then everything comes together. And I, uh, uh, I hope next week I have the first conversation with the company, hopefully to, uh, uh, for a co collaboration for it. They were quite enthusiastic. Wow. And then hopefully before the end of the year, I hope to have like, the first prototype finished. Uh, uh, which when it works, I'm going to, to, to do the milling, etc. all in my own atelier. I don't have the, well, my machines are like 100 years old, so wow. <laughs> I don't have the, the, the CNC machining. But I hope to have a, a prototype which will show that it's possible. So like a proof of concept and then we'll develop further and then the interesting uh, about printing is that when you have the the, 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 the the layout of the watch like the position of the the, uh, the bearings like the, the jewels they have to have a very uh, precise precision if you have them fixed with 3d printing you can design everything around it for each client differently so it can be a total bespoke watch actually wow yeah so that that's the, that's the idea behind it uh, and Jeez. if you look at the movement in front, uh, well, there are going to be some interesting shapes. Uh, it should be all about beauty also. This is, this is really a concept. Uh, the second hands, I like simple watches. So I like the, I like hand, uh, like hours, uh, hour hand, minute hand and second hands. There should be not much on it further because it's, yeah, it's, it's not uh, like modest or something anymore. I don't know. It's, should be a little bit serene, serene, is that the English word? Serene, yeah. So there's, it, it has to be about balance. So second hand uh, and uh, the barrel should be in, in one line and a large part of the barrel, barrel is going to be exposed with a beautiful like uh, sun, sun, uh, sun sleeve finishing. And then the balance, which is way lower than the other parts, it's a little bit to the side because it's, it's not that dominant. But you still, you should see it work. So it's, uh, uh, therefore it should be a, a, a skeleton. And then maybe later on there's place for a power reserve or something, but not much more than that. <laughs> I guess so. So that's, that's a project I'm working on right now. So, uh, that's uh, amazing. Thanks so much for yeah. sharing that with us. Yeah, well, exclusive here. <laughs> I, you know, I, I said I wasn't going to work, but I, I, I can't not talk <laughs> about watches. And I'm, I'm glad that we were able to do this very spontaneous video. Thank you so much for coming up, like coming up an hour from from where you're from to come show this stuff to us. It means a lot, and well, uh, I just, I just love. And thank you for introducing us to picture balls. Yeah, yeah. do you like it? <laughs> it was pretty amazing. <laughs> it was great. I am so enamored with that watch, which I'm gonna consider my watch. My mm. watch. <laughs> um, I want that piece. But thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you too for taking the time. Well, for me, it's obvious because I'm. I'm, I'm, for, I'm I'm, 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 I'm just fairly new to the industry, so everything is important. It's, I should expose it as much as possible. Good. But also, I'm, uh, when you're enthusiastic about it, you can talk about it all day. So, oh, in that sense, it's very safe that you didn't come by Delft because you 
you yeah. wouldn't leave that, that <laughs> knowing me i'd end up being there wanting to photograph and see everything for hours and, yeah yeah, yeah. Weeks. Still, two it's, weeks it's, yeah. it's very it's very small still but uh, <laughs> uh but still uh, we could fill a whole day so I, I, i'm sure so uh, i guess to very just to close it off even though i said thanks and all that stuff i guess the last question i want to ask you is um what of your peers in the watch industry do you admire do you appreciate ah, yeah. who do you like when it comes to brands and it could be anyone from rolex paddock yeah. to Cronenfeld to whoever like there's no wrong answer it could be casio like whatever what do you what do you like and what do you respect i'm also What's one first watches you've owned ah i'm just throwing random questions in there but okay that's that uh, the first watches i've owned are actually complex uh chrono cross i really like chrono cross in, in, in their technology and Same. Like, uh, Love the old graphs. ones without the like the false you i don't like the movement it's not it's not beautiful right the old column gra uh, wheel or chrono cross like, Often quite beautiful, like Angelus, etc. Uh, but right now, of course, I'm, I'm focused on independence. Also, how how are they creative? I think uh, Kronefeld, MBMF. We already spoke about them. MBMF because of the the exceptional pieces in the first place. Also, the way how how Max Brusser collaborates with other watchmakers, and also artists. Brilliant. Like it's like it's a, it's more like a creative atelier than a very uh, than a factory in that sense and that's very fascinating and the art side of it the chronofiles uh, because of the finishing and the materials and still quite conservative in their styling yeah it's a great balance I like Konstantin uh, uh, Chaikin uh, because it's crazy I think I guess <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, and like bigger brands Difficult question. Actually. There's so much, uh, but but I noticed that from I started from collecting like uh, Universal Genève. I, I really like uh, I like the older like the triple box kind of uh, uh, watches. I like Sima a lot, which is an unknown brand. Oh, yeah. uh, but they had like the most beautiful movements back in the days. Um, I started out with designing this because I own this very small Sima, like a very simple watch. A, a, a movement with gold chatons from the 1950s, a gold balance, like super high finishing with handmade anglage in, inside of it. And that was the reason that this is so beautiful and so simplistic at the same time that I, I have to try making my own. That's, <laughs> that's where the simplicity comes from. Philip Dufour, Dufour by the way, is simplicity, right? Oh, of course, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're it's, not. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I also look at, uh, I think, uh, from outside of the watch world, I, I take a lot of inspiration from architecture. Like how some architects are combining uh, uh, materials with, uh, like, uh, to use it as a certain aesthetics. But it's, it's um, uh, very fascinating that you have a material can be, intrin can have intrinsic beauty. At the same time, it's also a sculpture and people have to use it. So it has, it's a very complex balance. Um, I find that fascinating. And if you look at, for example, one architect I can point out, which is uh, in the beginning of the modernist era, is uh, Victor Horta, is an, uh, a Belgium architect, uh, was the founder of the Art Nouveau uh, uh, style. He, well, that's a very outspoken style and you can really dislike it, but you can't um, ignore the fact that he really knew what he was doing. So, he knew all the materials he worked with, he knew how to work with them, and therefore he knew how to design with it. So that's that's the best philosophy. You have to know what materials you use, you have to know what machines or technologies you use, and then you have a better design. So that's, for me, it's 100%. fascinating. That's yeah. basically alchemist level, like, just yeah. sorcery. That's And then from that's, that point, you can experiment. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's the biggest... Uh, inspiration i guess yeah. well that's brilliant thank you so much i can't wait and I look forward <laughs> to seeing this new prototype i Thanks can't wait to see where you go five ten years from now i'm really excited to see this <laughs> <laughs> you know there's so many indie brands and this is one that really caught my eye this is something that's very very unique i love the architecture and uh, i hope people like it and i hope it does really well thanks a lot so, thanks, thanks so a lot much for, for coming your time. 
Um, and Thanks where can where can people follow you and find you? Uh, well, most of my work I post on Instagram. It's called uh, Old Henry's Watches. So we'll put a link up or something. Yeah, it's better because my name. <laughs> well, that's one thing I want to also. It's going to be a little bit like Hotel Algerie. I hope it's going to be art. So. It's a, it's a niche product, so I thought, well, my name is niche enough, so... Uh, <laughs> it is, it is, it really is. <laughs> yeah. So that, that one of the things. But, yeah, if you can put a link, that, uh, that would be great. Yeah, and, uh, fantastic. Otherwise, it would be difficult. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> and I, I tend to, uh, to go... Uh, uh, I'm, I, I try to, to be as, as much fair as possible, which is sometimes difficult because they're extremely expensive, as you know. Uh, but but then I try, to be, uh, I try to be also in other places, so... Uh, this year, uh, still in Poland, you have this new fair called Our Kronos. There's Arnold and Son is co coming, for oh, example. Wow. I really like Arnold and Son, by the way. Um, yeah, they're they base all their movements on a Pasteur uh, movement. It's really wow. interesting. Uh, and uh, uh, and I think James is going to expose a couple of watches in uh, in uh, DC in District Prime in uh, Washington. So nice. uh, yeah, that's this year. Well, you need to come down. Are you going to come to the states for like worn wound wind up? Or maybe uh, not sure yet. You should definitely come. Yeah. Wind up is an amazing uh, thing. Yeah. It's Zach and yeah, the guys. I think that one is one on, uh, on my list, but I didn't Please come do. this year because well, my finances were in developing the watch. Of course. So you always have to choose uh, very uh, uh, confidently of how do you call it consciously. Yeah, of course. Uh, You'd be conscious about how you spend the money. Yeah. So uh, no, that's great. I hope to see you in the states soon. Yeah, I and, hope so too. And yeah. uh, thanks again for coming. Thank so. you too. <laughs> This is Smash Rob out from Amsterdam uh, live, and there's my co-host Mike. Thanks for asking questions. Yeah, it's a great time. See you later. Bye. <laughs>